What's up guys and welcome back to Linode. Today I wanted to show you guys how DNS lookups work in the Linux operating system. And in this video we'll cover the basics of DNS as well as the configuration files that handle DNS. And these files include the host file as well as the resolve.com file and the nsswitch.com file. So let's get started. Now, what is DNS? DNS stands for Domain Name System, and it's used to translate domain names into IP addresses. So when a user types a domain name into a web browser, such as google.com, their computer sends a request to a DNS server to resolve that domain name into an IP address. The DNS server then returns the IP address, allowing a user's computer to connect to the website. And this happens all the time for every computer that's connected on the internet. Whenever you do a request, it hits one of these domain servers that will translate that domain name to an IP address. So let's hop over and show you guys these configuration files so you can get a better understanding of how they work and also how you can use them to manage DNS on your system. All right, so the first configuration file I want to take a look at is the etcnsswitch.config. As you can see, I already have it pulled up. I basically just cat out that file so you guys can see everything about this file. And this file basically specifies the order in which the system should look up information about users, groups, hosts, which is what we're interested in, and other entities. And if you want to check out the current DNS lookup order, then you can just open it up just like this and it will lay out the order of that actual service on the system. So like as you can see, host, first thing it'll look at is the files, meaning configuration files on the system, and then it will go out to DNS servers at that point. If it can't find the answer at the file level, then it'll go out to DNS servers. And this is where the host file actually comes in at. Uh, right here where it says files and that's my whole purpose for showing you guys this file so you guys can understand the process that it follows that your system actually follows and this is the same across all Linux distributions uh, if you look into this same file the etc ns switch config it should say files and then DNS so you could check that in your system now if you want to now the next configuration file we want to look at is obviously that host file. So let me cut that out as well. Uh, etc and then host with an S, press enter. And this file basically maps IP addresses to host names. So for one, this is one example right here. This is a mapping to an IP address, which is our loopback address. And every system, Linux system, has a loopback address. And it basically points back to the server. So anytime someone types in localhost on this computer, uh, it knows that you're talking about this computer, which is the loopback address, which basically loops that connection back to the address of this server. And this file used to be used a lot by systems administrators back in the day in order to block access to certain sites because you can push out a host file to different systems on the network, especially if they have a Linux environment. You could push out host files to all these systems with changes to the host file that would block certain sites. And I'll show you guys that right now. So let's go down in uh, sudo nano and open up this file using our text editor you can use whatever text editor you want but we're going to use nano but i wanted to show you guys that you can uh, put the actual host name of this system in here by using the home address uh, a lot of people will do this right off so 127.0.1.1 and that is home that is called home the home address and what I want to do is give it the host name, which our host name is Linode, and then Ubuntu, which is the name of this server. So let's uh, close this out because I want to show you guys how to actually check this. You can see what the host 
name's IP address is by designating in that host file and you can check it by using a application built into the system operating system uh, let me move my mouse out the way so you guys can see but the dig command now the dig command basically queries DNS and it follows that process that's designated in the NS switch and that's any application on the system anytime it needs to do a DNS request it will follow these steps so it'll first look at the files uh, which the first file is our host file and then it'll go out and look at DNS. So let me show you guys the dig command right fast. But let's dig Linode dash Ubuntu and press enter. And one thing you want to look at is the IP address that's associated with that host name. And the host name is Linode dash Ubuntu. And as you can see, it uses that home address. So that's super cool, right? Now, let me show you guys something else. So let's dig Facebook.com. And I'm only doing this to pull up an example. So as you can see, the IP address for Facebook.com is that IP address. So 157.240.22.35. Now, the way systems administrators back in the day used to block, let's say Facebook, for example, they would go into the host file which let's go down and go into it so sudo nano etc host and you could designate a domain name's ip address a lot of times people will use the loopback address for that so 127.0.0.1 and then tab that out and we could put facebook.com and you can also put an alias some people put an alias you could put www uh, but nah, we're not going to do it the full domain name, but that's the alias. That's the other column that's there uh, That you guys don't see and one thing I didn't explain just ignore down here. This is the IP version 6 um, Of the host file, so it's in an IP version 6 format But this is IP version 4 up here at the top. So let's save this file right fast um, boom and as you can see that's the IP address of Facebook before we modified our host file now I want to run that same command so let's go dig facebook.com and you'll see that the IP address to that server has changed because our host file took priority over any DNS queries and points facebook.com to whatever we have in our host file so that's essentially how the host file works now the next configuration file I want to show you guys is the resolve.com. So let's uh cat that out right fast so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh but etc and then resolve.conf and press enter. And as you can see, this file has a it has a lot of notes. Now, one thing about this file, uh you can't modify this file and the information sticks. Like in the past, in older Linux or older versions of Linux, uh, you used to be able to make changes to this file. And this will control the DNS servers that are used for DNS lookup. Now they've implemented another application called NetPlan, which controls the DNS lookup servers. But you can still go in and modify this. It's just not going to stick. So every time you reboot the server, it'll wipe this out. Now there's a fix to this and I'll show you guys that in a second, but let's go into this file and show you guys how to add a name server in here. So let's go sudo nano and then let's type in our sudo password. And if you go down to the bottom, Nick, this gives you the format. So it's really just a space in between it. Uh, so I'm going to type it in a uh, name server and then space. 8.8.8.8 and the reason I put that there because I know that is Google's DNS servers so you can modify it and put anybody's DNS servers in here like there's Cloudflare uh, it's a couple other DNS servers out there you just have to do some research and find those server IP addresses but uh, let me add the second one in here so 8.4.4 8 and let's go down and save this but those are the DNS servers for Google and I wanted to show you guys uh, a resolution of it so I don't know if you guys remember when I ran the dig command up here 
uh, it points out the server. So as you can see, that's the server that's running the DNS queries. Well, since we modified that file, it should force it to look at the Google DNS servers in order to do the query. Now let's cut out that file just to verify that we saved it. Everything was saved. So as you can see, that's what we're looking for when we run the dig command. We'll look, we'll look for the 8.8.8.8. And the way this file works, it reads everything from top down. So it'll start with this DNS server. And if it's unavailable, it'll go to the secondary DNS server. And then lastly, it'll go down to this DNS server. Uh, so just point that out to you guys so you guys would know that that's how the file works so if we run the dig command again and let's look at another domain and what i'm gonna look at is lenode.com and let me move the mouse out the way so you guys can see but let's press enter and as you can see it's using this dns server which is that google dns server so that's how the resolve.conf file actually works now as i said it will remove those name servers if you reboot now let me show you guys an easy way to permanently put a DNS server in there. And let me go back into this file right fast because I want to show you guys um, that it's actually working by removing it. So I'm going to remove these lines. Uh, let's go back to this one and let's save the file. And then I'll cut it out again so you guys can see that those saves, saves have taken. And let's install another application on here. And it's a small application. Uh, but this is considered the easy way of managing your DNS servers versus using the net plan, which is a not so easy way of managing those DNS servers. It's a little bit difficult of a file. The formatting is different. It's written in the YAML language. The net plan is written in the YAML language. And so the way it's written is a little bit confusing for new users. That's why I want to show you guys this way. But sudo apt install and what we want to install is resolve conf and this application is built specifically to manage that resolve.conf file so let's press enter get it installed and i'll show you guys uh, how to actually use it okay so resolve conf is installed let me show you guys how to configure it right fast and so there's a file under uh and let's type in our text editor and then etc resolve conf is a directory that's under there and then there's another resolve uh, conf.d and then what we're looking for is the head file and we need to modify this so let's go in here and all we have to do is put in the same format as we did in the resolve.conf file uh, just put name server and then specify our name servers and Let's go down and put in the other one and then 8.4.4.8 and go down and save this configuration file. And basically what's going to happen since the resolve.conf will not stick after reboots, this application, this small application will rewrite it every single time the system is rebooted. So therefore your name servers that you want to use for this system will always be in that resolve.com file. Now, one thing you have to enable this service because it runs as a service in the background. So all we have to do is type sudo system CTL and then enable resolve conf dot service and press enter. And that'll start that service every single time you reboot the system. Okay, so before I reboot the server, I want to go in and show you guys what will show up when we dig on this server. And I'm 100% sure once you start that service or enable that service, that it'll write out those name servers within that configuration file. So it should be still using 8.8.8.8, which is those Google DNS servers. But let's go on and do it by running uh, Linode.com press enter and yes it is still using those so whenever you enable that whatever you put in the head file uh, up here it'll go on and put it in 
the resolve.com file. So let's go in there and re remove those because it won't be a clear example if those are still in there to show you guys that it will write out those IP addresses every single time it boots up the system to that resolve.com. So let's go sudo nano and then that etc and then resolve.conf and press enter and then we're just going to cut these lines right fast out boom and then let's go down and save this file boom and now let's reboot the server so let's go sudo reboot now press enter and i'll be back when it actually comes back up okay cool so i'm logged back into the server after the reboot and i just wanted to go through and cat out our etc resolve.conf file so you guys can see that those uh servers are put back in there so those those google domain dns servers and as you can see right here it kind of modifies this whole file as you can see it says dynamic resolve.conf um and it basically will be rewritten every single time so whatever you put in that head file it'll write it out in here so you don't have to worry about it not using the correct dns servers that you set up for this server to use so in this tutorial we've covered the basics of dns as well as the configuration files that handle dns in linux we've checked out the nsswitch.conf which defines dns lookup order as well as the host file which maps the ip addresses to host names and how to use the resolve.com file to specify the dns servers to use for lookup and as always thank you guys so much for watching and please like share and subscribe to the channel and definitely if you have any questions please check out the Linode community site which the link will be down in the description of the video. So see you guys in the next one. Peace.